You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony, and we are broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios, and this hour is also sponsored by Extreme Exteriors. If you're just joining us uh, today on the show in a little bit, um, we're going to be uh, asking the question, do the dynamics of an HOA cause dysfunction in homeowners? A psychologist in Nevada thinks so and has come up with what he calls the HOA syndrome. Is it real? If so, what can be done? We'll be talking soon with Dr. Gary Solomon from Nevada. Uh, we also have later on in the second hour, too, our uh, good friend Dan Greenstein, who will be uh, joining us, too. There's always seems to be a constant feud between uh, homeowners and renters in HOAs. Uh, there's always a new little nuance that comes up, and uh, there's something that an HOA is uh Moving forward with a little bit different than what we've seen before, we're going to be talking to Dan uh, about that. But uh, right now, uh, we want to talk about ice dams. As we mentioned, uh, it has cost Minnesotans quite a bit of money this year, and hopefully we're done with that for the year. (laughs) But we have uh, on the show sponsors of Where You Live, Extreme Exteriors. We have Jeff and Jeannie Sigler with us in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, morning. and welcome. Yeah, well, thank you. And you guys have put together, uh, I think it is a really uh, great uh, information piece. Uh, Tell us just a little bit about it. Um, We get calls on a daily basis, just common questions. Uh, Is this related to my roof? Is this related to poor installation? Um, So we... We decided it might be a good idea to put together kind of some common uh, misconceptions that people have about what may be actually causing these leaks and ice dams forming mm-hmm. on their roofs. Yeah, and you know, that is, uh, there is a lot of speculation we hear all the time as soon as uh, water starts leaking in from someone's roof. And I think uh, this is uh, some really good information. Now, what we're going uh, to go through here, you've put it together. This is something that uh, people, our listeners, can have, too, as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's begin with uh, some of these. You call them um, myths or misconceptions about ice dams. The first myth, you say, is my roof shingles or other roofing materials are incorrectly installed or defective, and that's causing ice dams. Sure, that's the probably the biggest uh, complaint that we hear from homeowners. Um, we have a brand new roof. Our roof is, you know, two mm-hmm. or three years old, and and how could we possibly have ice dams forming? Um, obviously, in the state of Minnesota, we use ice and water shield protection quite regularly. That's part of the code for installing a new roof. And uh, the the biggest misconception is that people believe that this ice and water shield protection is going to actually stop any sort of ice from forming and mm. uh, in relation water intrusion along with that. And maybe, Jeff, you want to expand a little bit on that? Ice and water shield was initially uh, developed to seal around the nails that uh, we used along the eaves of houses. And with the pneumatic nailers, um, they have feeder wires that connect the nails together in a coil. And when you shoot those into the roof, it's supposed to seal around the nail. And it won't do that anymore because the barbs that are on these nails are actually cutting the ice and water shield. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to convince these uh, builders and associations that when they do the uh, ice and water areas of their house to use a particular brand of ice and water shield and also to hand nail those areas because the old-fashioned hand nails do not have barbs on the Mm. nails. Yeah, Mm. and it's interesting. I mean, in one aspect, one thing that I don't think people understand is any time you puncture a hole through (laughs) the roof, it's a potential for leaking. Even though it is a snug nail that may be on okay. some ice shield and may be snug against the wood, you now have a hole and you have a potential for water. You have vents, uh, venting out, um, you know, the uh, uh, the furnace, the furnace, vent furnace and the and, uh, plumbing vent, exhaust fans, yep. all of that, and 
anytime you have that, uh, a hole is a hole, and <laughs> water can go into it, right? Correct. Pitch roofs are meant to shed the water off, and when you have an ice dam on the bottom that stops the water from wanting to escape off the roof, it uh, it backs up, yep. and anytime you slow up water, it's going to find a spot to go. Sure, because it backs up under the shingles. Right. Right, and then it's there your roof is, your your attic space is just exposed to that water completely. Now, water shield helps some, doesn't it? Ice and water shields? It, it is a shield, but it's not a uh, impregnable uh, gotcha. system. And it gotcha. also... According to code, only goes up so many feet from the that roof line too, from the very beginning or bottom part of the roof. Correct. So uh, even if you, what happens is, uh, we'll tell our listeners a little bit so they have a, an understanding the uh, how do, the ice uh, dam forms and then what happens with uh, water backing up. Uh, the ice actually, the water tries to run off the roof and hits the cold edge where the soffit is. Uh, and it was de- designed to do that, but the problem is, is if a uh, property is inadequately insulated, it'll continue to melt the snow, and it'll hit the cold edge and make a. It looks like a ski jump at the end of it, and the water can no longer run off the edge of the roof, mm. and it just sits behind this ice dam, wet, even when it's zero degrees outside. There's a puddle of water on your roof, and that's when it backs in, and it filters through those nail holes with the barbs mm-hmm. on it through the mm-hmm. ice and water shield. Mm-hmm. And so, and I've seen those uh, ice dams too. You see a little, uh, a little, uh, I guess, uh, bump or mound that begins to form on the edge. But I've seen those grow and grow uh, to be a, a foot high. Yeah. And if it is, you're talking about a lot of water that just sits there and the roof was never meant to be a swimming pool to <laughs> hold that water so it goes through. Correct. And we've also seen uh, problems where the ice is so heavy on that edge, either sitting in a gutter on the edge of the roof where it actually pulls the subfascia board right mm. off the building along mm. with the entire soffit. Yeah, I want to mention you can you can see these ice dams usually yes. from the ground. If you can see the edge of your roof, you'll see a thick layer of ice or sometimes long icicles, correct? Correct. So that's a symptom. Right. Is it not if you see that ice up there? And so now a, a lot of people have been hearing from a lot of companies and you guys uh, are advertising and are very good at uh, being able to remove ice dams. We've used you quite a bit at a number of our properties uh, this year. And... Uh, we love the fact you guys have always been really responsive and just uh, great at taking care of the issue. But you were saying that there is really more that the homeowner association or individual homeowner should be thinking even once we get past this season. And that uh, deals with uh, not just having someone remove a um, an ice dam when you have it, but there are some things, steps in prevention and talk a little bit about what are some of those important things that they need to do. Um, if they have had a leak, they should definitely call an insulation contractor to um, inspect their insulation because once insulation gets wet, it compacts down. And then next winter, they'll have even more rapid uh, ice melting problems mm-hmm. just because of the uh, lack of insulation. And a, a lot of the heat that's escaping could be just from inadequate uh, insulation or or sealing around uh, all of the, the nooks and crannies uh, that a house has where it releases heat into the attic. Right. Uh, most places have either a ridge vent across the top of the roof or square box vents. And after snowfall, typically those don't clear and the snow sits on top of them and prevents any heat from coming out of the attic. And that just uh, speeds up the ice melting process. So it's that warm air in the attic that keeps melting the snow. Correct. And that's that's another of your misconceptions on your list is that if the roof vents are covered with snow and ice, it's not really a problem because the hot air will melt it. Absolutely. Um, that's that's one of uh, another, I guess, big uh, hurdle that we run into sometimes when, when dealing with homeowners with you know, whether or not their roof needs to be replaced. Is it something that um, we can try and prevent from happening next winter? Mm -hmm. Um, The whole ice damming situation can occur from lack of ventilation um, on a property. Like Jeff is saying, I mean, poor insulation uh, coupled with poor uh, venting systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have seen some 
associations that are very obviously um, underventilated. Mm -hmm. And all of those things can cause uh, refreezing of ice um, and the, the, I guess, in some situations, it's actually more of the steam that is uh, evaporating mm. and kind of freezing under the roof mm. decking that will create some problems with, once it starts yeah. melting again, dripping onto the insulation. Yeah. Well, this is some really great information. Now, for our listeners who are listening to you guys, if they want to get a hold of you, uh, how can they do so? They can give us a call at 763 441 one three three four, uh, and uh, email us at uh, genie at extreme exteriors with an X dot com. Okay, and you also have a website too. We that... do www dot extreme exteriors dot com. And uh, you said you're going to be posting this information on that website. But for our listeners, if you'd like uh, your free copy of the eleven facts and misconceptions about ice dams, give us a call during the week at New Concepts at 952-922-2500. Ask for Courtney. She'll make sure that uh, you get uh, directed over to Extreme Exteriors and you get uh, that information sent to you. Great information if you're in a single-family home or on uh, the board of your HOA as well. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, Uh, Do the dynamics of an HOA really cause dysfunction in homeowners? We're going to be talking with Dr. Gary Solomon, who's going to be talking about HOA syndrome. We'll be back after this. You're listening to Where You Live on AM 1280, The Patriot.